I need to fix my nails. Jesus. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica and today I am fixing the Morphe 35K. Now for those of you that think this might be a little bit cocky or a little bit strange, what I'm doing is taking a palette that I purchased because when I looked at it, I saw something inspiring. I saw a nice mix of cool tones, warm tones, and the fact that it was inspired by coffee, which I know basically any palette can be inspired by coffee, but I looked at this palette and I saw potential. I saw potential. But then when I ordered the palette and I had it right here in front of me and I was looking at it, I couldn't quite figure out how to use it, if that makes any sense. So I had this palette that looking at it was inspiring. I loved looking at it, but I could not for the life of me figure out really how to use it. And I was looking on YouTube. Not many people had tutorials on this palette. I looked all over Pinterest. I looked all over YouTube. I don't know if it's because like it's an older palette and no one is really going back to it. But even like doing my best, I couldn't find too many tutorials on it. So that's when I decided I didn't want to declutter it because I did find it so inspiring. So I decided to quote unquote fix it by paring it down to really just the shades that I found inspiring and basically creating my own mini or smaller version of the 35K. So what I did is I cut it down to 18 shades. So this is what the original palette looks like. And this is my version of the 35K. I cut it down to 18 shades and I really think that that's a workable number for a palette. As, as, as I've stated before on my channel, I really think once you get more than like 18 to 20 shades in a palette, you're really like, you're getting into overkill territory. I really think that a great palette can come from between 18 to 25 shades. 18 to 20 shades. 18 to 20 shades. So that's what the palette looks like, and then this is my depotted 35K. My ring light's doing a little bit of funny stuff right there, but there we go. So I have the 18 shades right here. What I'm going to do in this video is go through why I picked each one of these shades, why I decided not to keep any of the other ones, and then I'm going to show you a demo of me applying these shades and actually creating a look out of them. I'm not wearing this on my eyes today, I actually just finished filming my blood sugar palette, three looks, one palette, so this is actually look number three. If you're interested in that, I'll go ahead and throw it up in the cards above. But I will be including a demo of these shades in my little created 35k palette towards the end of this video. So first, let's jump into why I picked these 18 shades. So basically what I did in the original 35k, I numbered them 1 through 35, going across the top row, skipping to the next row, and continuing on. So for each one of the depotted singles, what I did is as I depotted them, basically what I did is I labeled each shade. So this one says 35k number 1. So I know that this is from the 35k, and it's the shade number 1. Now I have a list of all the shades in the palette and which ones I picked. So I kept shades 1 through 5 of this palette because I thought that they had a nice range to them. They weren't the same like five shades over and over. You've got this nice white shade which is a good um, highlight for the brow bone or for the inner corner. You have a really pretty like champagne sparkly shade which is beautiful on the lid. You have two nice transition shades, shades number three and four. One is a lighter, more yellow shade, and the other one is a nice taupe shade. I will show full swatches later on because in this lighting they don't look so great, um, but those are two great transition shades. And then shade number five is a nice gold with just like a pink shift to it. Um, shimmer. So that looks beautiful on the lid as well. I've also used it on the inner corner and on the lower lash line. So that's why I kept shades 1 through 5. I decided not to do shades 6 and 7 and the next shade that I kept was number 8 which is this nice like dark brown metallic shade. And then this one is a really unique shade. It It is a beautiful shimmer and it's got like light gold reflex to it so i thought that one was unique but i thought that was a really unique shade and so i used it to finish up my top row of my fixed palette so for my second row of my palette i started with shades 11 and 12. 11 is a nice just 
dark matte brown shade which I do think is essential to this palette since you are trying to work more with the warm mattes and then bring in like some cool shimmer so I did keep that one shade 12 again is a nice dark brown but it does have some different undertones to it as you will see in these swatches the next two shades i kept were shades 15 and shade 21 shade 15 is a true gold shimmer and it does pair beautifully with a lot of the transitions with a lot of the other shimmers so i kept that one in the palette the next shade shade 21 is a really unique shade it's like a dark brown gray and it's not quite a shimmer it's got like a nice satin finish to it so because the finish was so unique and that the shade was so unique I felt that I really had to keep it in the palette so moving on I did keep shades 20 through through 26 in the palette 22 is this beautiful like light teal shimmer shade right here and that I really think that was one of the focal points of the palette so I wanted to make sure that I kept that in there Next we have this like beautiful like almost a light lilac not quite if not quite a matte it's more of like a shimmer and this one works so well with shade number 22 and I feel it's with these shades that this palette really shines because you don't really find like this it's almost like a gunmetal violet which is stunning and you don't really see many of that shade in actual palettes along with the rest of these shades like I feel like this palette really had its strength with its wide variety of shades. It went from warm to cool, it went from matte to shimmer to metallic, and I really did wanna keep the essence of that in like this miniature version of the palette. Okay, so shade 23 finished out my second row of the palette, as you can see right up here. The last row of the palette, I started off with shade number 24. It is a, um, it's another matte it's a lighter brown it's actually fairly close to being like my perfect transition shade just a little bit darker and warmer than my skin tone so that's why i kept that in there next i have shade number 25 which is another kind of brown gunmetal shade it's another beautiful like brown gray gunmetal color but it does have like a different reflect than the previous color and it's not as dark so I did keep that in there so that you had the variety of darks to lights. Next, I have shade number 26, which is a which is a pure copper shade. And I feel like that one really could round out a lot of the warm browns in the palette if you wanted to stick to browns, and it really does contrast nicely with the with like the teal shade right up here and then with the pure white in the top right corner of the palette. Okay, so next I have shade number 29, which is a nice matte silver color. This pairs nicely with a couple of the other cool shades in the palette, and I did want to keep one of the only like matte cool tones inside this miniature version of the palette as well. Next I have shade number 31, which is a true dark silver. It's not completely matte, it has just a tinge of like a satin finish to it. And then last but not least, I kept the black shade, shade number 35, from the bottom right hand side of the palette. I don't think every palette needs to have a white and a black to really balance it out, but for this one, I think that having that bright sparkle white as a brow bone and as an inner corner and then anchoring it with this dark black, and it's a nice matte black, it doesn't have any shimmer in it, which I really appreciated. I really think anchoring the palette in that really helps complete the spectrum of colors that you have here. So that is everything that I have in my little Morphe 3518. <laughs> So let's go ahead and jump into the rest of the swatches of this palette and then we're going to jump into the demo of me creating a look out of these shades.
So I already primed and set my primer using shade 3 from the palette. So to begin, I'm going to take a mixture of shades 3 and 4 right here and run them all throughout my crease and transition area. Because my eyes are so hooded, whatever I typically tend to go in for my first shade, I tend to bring a little bit higher than most people would just because my crease is very low and hooded. Next, I take shade 11 from the palette on a Sigma E25 and I just begin to build this up in the outer V. What I'm doing is placing the color first and then beginning to blend it in. And then after I've built up the color deep enough that I would like it, I begin to bring it just a little bit into the crease. Next, I'm taking shade number 12 and I'm doing almost the same thing with the same Sigma E25. I am placing the color in the outer V, deepening it up, and then once I've built up that color dark enough, I begin to bring it up throughout the crease as well. Not as high as I brought the other two shades though. Next, I'm taking a big fluffy brush and I'm just running that through all the colors just to make sure everything is nice and blended. Next, I'm taking my concealer, Makeup Revolution Concealer, and my NYX Glitter Glue and I am cutting out my crease. Now this takes a lot of practice, I'm still not that great at it, but what I do is take a really really tiny detail brush, I go in with just a little bit of the concealer, and I cut out my crease. As you can see, I am cutting it out much higher than my natural crease, just so that you can see the shadow when my eyes are open. And once I get a thin layer of the concealer spread out, I just put a little bit of the glitter glue on top of it. And then I go in with shade number 22, that nice silver teal color, and I gently place that on top of just where I placed the glitter glue and the concealer. Once the color is all placed, I just take my Sigma E25 and I blend out just the edges on the outer V. And then I go ahead and do the same thing to the other eye. Next I go in with lashes and liner. My favorite lashes right now are the Velour Touch of Wispy Lashes and then I have my usual liners. Boom! And thanks to the magic of editing, they are on. For the lower lash line, I am taking shade number 26 from the Fixed palette and I am bringing that on a small smudging brush just on the outer V or the very outer corner of the lower lash line just to create more of a cat-like effect. Make sure you don't bring this in too far because otherwise you'll just get a really dark smudgy lower lash line. Next, I am taking shade number one and I am placing this as a brow bone highlight on both sides and then I am also using this to highlight the inner corner.
Okay, so this is the final look from the demo using my fixed Morphe 18K palette. Overall, I'm feeling more inspired by this palette. It, everything's more condensed. I really pared it down to just the shades that inspired me, and I love mixing the warm and cool tones. I think that this like silver cut crease with the warm tones is is just beautiful. And I think it's great that this isn't like the only look you can get out of this palette. You've got gold, you've got silvers, you've got just a wide range of what you can do that I feel like I'm not going to get bored with this palette anytime soon. So thank you so much for sticking through this. Let me know what you thought of this palette down below. I would love to hear your comments. Are there any other palettes that you feel the same way about? Do you look at a palette and think, God, there's just too much to work with or like I'm inspired by it, but I don't know where to start? Let me know down below. I would really love to do this with another palette because it took me a long time to depot it and everything, but I really had so much fun doing this so i would love to do it again with another palette so let me know your suggestions down below don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe if you like this and you want to see any more of my videos and i hope i'll see you in my next one bye